the mission for the XCTC program is to provide a world-class training event for brigade combat teams focused at the platoon level to, uh, to, bring, to maintain that proficiency and that war fighting capability. And the real value is you can't get this type of training without having the augmentation of an XCTC or one of the training centers, NTC or JRTC, to provide that realistic training environment for the soldiers. XCTC coordination started 18 months ago. Uh, this was our overall plans, identifying the training objectives for the brigade, and then nesting everybody's individual efforts, both from the AC and the RC, gaining our, our partnership with 3-1 CAV Great Gray Wolf Brigade and the uh, First Army, and then along with the support uh, network through the XCTC program uh, at National Guard Bureau. This is not an exercise 3rd Brigade just plugged into. Uh, it really was a deliberate planning process between 155th, 3rd ABCT in the state of Mississippi. Leaders at Echelon bring priorities, resources, and commitment to each other to make each other better. Evaluating, we're not here to evaluate. We are here to assist, advise, and enable training of this reserve component unit. And it doesn't stop at the end of this XCTC. It began years ago and it will continue in the future as we stay on partnership with 155 ABCT uh, through their NTC rotation in 2017. We, uh, we sit down with the brigade staff and the brigade commander's objectives. We lay out a training matrix that, that plans the training for every single day of the rotation. And then we go into a synchronization meeting. Every, every morning at 10 o'clock, we sit down with all the key players and we sync every single thing on the battlefield for the next 72 hours. Uh, we've got role players, which are native language speakers. We've got civilians on the battlefield. We've got the op four. Every single piece of that is synced. That's all behind the scenes to the unit. They show up and the training's there, and all that was done without them knowing it. And uh, you, you call it behind the curtain or behind the scenes. That, that's the only way we're effective. There are multiple uh, meetings that we end up executing throughout the day, making sure that uh, the, the initial training of, of objectives are maintained, that we're orienting both the opposing force and the blue force all up on the same training objectives. Th this overall communications allows us to either ratchet up the real stat to improve or enhance the, the, the opposing force or draw back down in order to get our individual training objectives. 3-1 CAV has two roles uh, in this exercise. One is uh, we provide the opposing force uh, with a majority of 112 CAV, but also uh, 112 CAV is attached to 155th for this exercise as a subordinate battalion and not just an Op 4 battalion. So 112 CAV is both participating as opposing force, but they're also the blue force as one of the subordinate units for 155th. 3-1's role really in this thing has been providing the backbone uh, of the high con uh, for the command post exercise for 155th. And that's why the brigade staff's down here right now. The BCT's prim primary uh, mission is to close up on the enemy in, in whole gr ground. It's made up of tanks, Bradleys, Paladins, and combat platforms oh. that, that are heavy, which uh, can, can maneuver fast on the battlefield uh, with audacity and whole ground. If uh, you looked around at where we are right now, 40 feet to our left, is an instrumented AAR tent. Moving throughout the battlefield is a coordinated and integrated op four of like capability. You've got battlefield effects that XCTC coordinates and synchronizes across every mission set, day and night, 24 hours at a time. You've got external coordinated OCTs at Echelon providing feedback. That is just creating realistic, hard training. And that takes a lot of resources, coordination, and synchronization. You're not going to get this opportunity all the time. So when you have an XCTC come together and you overlay all the resources on top of it, XCTC is an opportunity to get better because you're going to stress every leader and every system that you have. And when you look at that as progression within any unit training plan, whether it was active component or reserve component, it doesn't matter. It stresses systems, allows you to see yourself and define your objectives and goals in the future to get better. Yeah, anytime you end up bringing 4,000 soldiers up into one, one maneuver box with, which I, with a live active threat, 
uh, it's always going to going to be some 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 adventure learning. So the OCs of the First Army uh, d definitely put those con control measures around. It was very very well con con controlled uh, for the citizens or, or, uh, from Mississippi. There was a lot of dollars brought brought in, in into this training. Uh, for what Mississippi gets back are a lot of well trained so soldiers who have uh, collective training readiness that 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 is within the Department of the Army, Army standards. And now these soldiers are going to take this organization plans oh. and, and, and architecture back to uh, Mississippi jobs. And I think uh, the other thing for the state of Mississippi is what, what, what we are very happy with is, is the treatment we've been given at Camp Shelby uh, and the reception that we received here uh, for, for, for third ABCT as we've come through here. All the support that's been given to use the facilities here to the life support, uh, it's been just phenomenal. The, the citizens of Mississippi and the citizens of the United States need to know that the National Guard soldiers are getting outstanding training. It's, I had 25 years on active duty. I've been doing this for quite a while. Best training I've ever seen outside of one of the national training.